Megan Smith joined. Hi, Megan. I'm just adjusting uh, my tripod. And then we're going to get started. Jacob Burris. Welcome, Jacob. You can tell. You can hear Sp Spry's ready to go. <clears throat> just adjusting my tripod, guys. Um, going to work in the... Can work in the hallway again tonight. So, uh, looks like Sierra's in, or maybe that's, maybe that's Steph. Kaylee, welcome. Steph joined in. So we're getting some people in. So I'm gonna start out same routine. Welcome everybody tonight. Later start than I had hoped, um, but things we had a lot of things going on tonight. So um, I'm gonna start out. We're gonna go to the same thing. Uh, start out with bringing the pup outside. So let's get her outside. She's been in her little pen most of the evening tonight. Um, so I'm gonna take her outside. I'm gonna let her do her business. And then we're gonna work on this. Will be the first recall of the night, and that's getting her to uh, there immediately. She peed, so she really had to go. Um, so now I'm gonna get her to come on, 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 good girl, very good, very good. I'm gonna give her some praise for coming. Then I'm gonna take her back. We're gonna have her do it again. Melissa Springer's in. Welcome, Melissa. Joe is in. Lots of thumbs coming. All right, I love it. Uh, Stephanie, thought you missed it. Glad you didn't. Well, see, there's a reason why we were late tonight. We had to let Stephanie get in. So I'm gonna set her down again, guys, and then I'm gonna race her back. Come on, 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 come on. Good girl, very good, very good. You can see she's getting pretty good at this. Um, she still struggles with it midday. Uh, she usually does really well in the morning, does really well in the evening uh, because she knows we're gonna eat. So this time I'm gonna let her kind of wander off a little bit because I'm going to give her I'm actually going to try to draw her away from something so she's I don't know if you can see it or not maybe but she's playing around with putting on some sunflower seeds come on 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 little pup that's a good girl come on come on come on come on come on come on very good very good that's a good girl come here now come here so that was a nice one we'll end it on that so we got three nice little recalls coming in welcome everyone the numbers are going up here robbie schmidt's in melissa's in mike schulte's in little thumbs are getting popped i love it when the thumbs come so uh i'm gonna bring her over we're gonna do the same thing tonight that we've done now this make it four in a row so four times in a row two days in a row so we're gonna we set the the great wall up here, um, <clears throat> which is gonna allow for me to have some containment. Yeah, if you please would. Um, Steph's gonna set my little tripod up. Hello. So I'm gonna try and oh. see if we can get. Yeah, that will work. Is it higher or is that? I'll good? tip it when I'll tip it when we do the dog. So yeah, leave it right there. That's good. Thank you. So. We're going to, <clears throat> tonight we're going to be pretty, I'm going to say we're going to be um, simple. I think, I think my takeaway over the last couple days has been, I maybe have been trying to push things. And part of the reason I've been trying to push things, I'm going to duck down so I can talk to you guys. Part of the reason I feel like I've been trying to push things is, I don't know, but myself, I feel like I may be getting a little bored with it and I'm going... I'm gonna, my fear is I'm gonna lose your guys' interest. So my fear is spice it up a little bit, man. Keep it, keep it interesting, do something new. So now, yesterday we did retrieves. I think it was time to do retrieves. I didn't do that just because I thought we were getting a little flat. Um, but what I do think I, thinking back on it, what I do think I thought I made a change and tried to spice things up a little bit, if, it, if that's possible to make dog training spicy. But I think one thing I did was I tried to add a whole bunch of stuff. And, and if I look at the one day that I had a list of things to work on, and we worked on everything, 
and it was probably our worst day. And it was because, I think it was because my focus wasn't on specific things that I was trying to improve on with her. My focus was on don't lose your guys' interest, so add a whole bunch of shit and make it really exciting. Well, it got exciting, but it was because it was not very good. It wasn't very positive. So I'm going to simplify things, and I think you guys can do this as well, So, or should do this. So take a step back is what I'm doing. I am uh, uh, spice it up. Fireball for everyone, Robbie Schmidt says. Well, that's a Saturday Night Live um, or a Friday Night Live. I've, I've been known to stumble on Saturday nights. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off and figure out how to get just real solid. It might be boring. So I'm giving my, my warning to you guys. It might be boring. Now do me a favor. Uh, share these if you would. Matt Tandy just joined in. April's in. Um, Jeff Trudell is in. Do me a favor, guys. Share these because we're going to try to grow it. We, I feel like we get to certain plateaus with numbers and views. And then all of a sudden we make a push and we gain a whole other group. And there's a bunch of you that have become regulars. Like we hover around that 30 pretty, pretty strong. And we get like really consistent participation, which I love. I know there's a lot of people that are just laying in the weeds watching, which is great. I don't mind that. But what I'd like to do is try to continue to gain people's involvement because I think it gets better the more people we get involved. So um, so do me a favor if you would, share them away. Um, and we're going to try to grow this thing organically. But anyway, I'm going to have her, I took her outside. She worked on her little recall tonight. So that was pretty nice. Um, I actually, if you guys are Instagrammers, so she's here's here's a good here's a good one. It's imprompt. Like I didn't plan on talking about this. Hold on one second. I'm gonna lift this thing up. So we got these tripods and stuff now. So hold, bear with me. Unhanded. So. Um, this wasn't going to be part of tonight's thing. I wasn't going to talk about this, but we are now because it's, it's happening. Did you guys notice when I was holding on to this dog how she started nipping at me? I was, I was kneeling on the ground because I had the tripod set up so I could do the feeding, I could do the recall, all that stuff. So when I was on the ground, her back feet were on my knee. I had her very close to me and she was nipping at me and biting at me. She got me. She got me right on the knuckle here. So I have to fix that. So everyone, you know, so many people have, have ha had concerns with dogs nipping and biting. How do you fix that? I, first off, I don't want it to continue because if it continues, you're forming a habit. You're forming the wrong habit. So we have to stop that habit immediately. So if you'll notice, since I stood up, I've made some adjustments. They've been very f simple adjustments physical adjustments, and how much nipping and chewing has she done since? None. In fact, she's kind of starting to settle down. I'm going to hold her a little bit closer. She's shaking. She's pretty excited. See those little, those little, those are shivers on her. They're excitement. She's not cold. So I'm going to hold her a little closer so you can see. But, and I'm going to, I'm going to search right now for this change in her. I want to get a change in the way she settles in with me. Um, Nicole Thorard, Matt Tandy, Jeff Trudell, Brian Pikarowski's in. Um, so, welcome guys, welcome. So, what I want her to do is to settle the way she had been in the past. So, what am I doing? I'm going right back to how I was holding her. She cannot bite me if I hold her like this. So, if you've got a little puppy that's getting really nippy and mouthy, the reason that I think she was just doing that is she's getting a little bit older and a little bolder. And she's getting to the point where she's going to start to um, kind of test and see, well, he really thought he was the boss. I'm going to see if he still is. Like she's going she's gonna to test me once in a while. And if we don't pass that test, she may challenge kind of where she is in the pack. So I, that's how I read that. That's how I, what I think that was. So now I'm going to go back to just holding her in the right position where she can, there's nothing she physically can get at. So that's what I want to do. Now, this reminds me of the other day when we were at my shop 
um, and we, we changed locations. So when I first started this out, I talked about this is the fourth time in a row in this location, the hallway. Most of the time we do it 10 feet away from here in my kitchen. And she got so good in the kitchen over a course of about, I'd say it was seven to 10 days probably. So 14 to maybe 20 repetitions of this. She got so good that when I picked her up, she just went, she just laid in my arms and it was great. And I got excited and I set her down. And she, she performed very well. If you go back a couple days, she was about a scale of one to 10. She was an eight or above for like days in a row. So that told me, let's move locations. So then we got a little cocky and we went to my workshop or our shop, our warehouse, and we did the exact same thing and she struggled, I thought significantly. Well, it was part of the location change. I think that really affected it. So then we came back home and I said, okay, I have to now start changing locations. I'm not necessarily gonna change the routine or change the things we're working on because she's not that good yet. James Lewis is in, welcome James. Been a long time since we talked, James. Uh, so I'm not going to change the routine. I'm going to keep the routine where it is. But what I am going to do is start making it be as good as it once was in a different spot. So right now, I'm going to wait until she settles in. And I've been pretty fast-paced myself here uh, since we got started. I've been, I'm a little behind. I think it's late. I don't want to go as late as I have been. So I'm trying to speed this up. Well, here's the big reminder. No speed training dogs doesn't work. So don't think, I can't think that I can speed this process up to get through it any quicker. So I'm going to just be quiet for a second. Imagine that. And just let her settle. Now she's a little distracted by there's other dogs here on their places. She's looking at them but I'm just gonna wait. This is where it gets boring. But this is the part that we just have to realize it's part of dog training. No seven minute labs, says Doug Fink. Seven minute labs, I'm not sure what you mean, Doug. Uh, no speed training, I can't get it. I'm, imagine, I'm, I'm assuming there's something out there that's called the seven minute lab. See how she's twitching? She's, she's, I, it's a combination of excitement. It's a combination of a little bit uneasy in this spot. I'm gonna wait until I get what I need to get out of her before she eats. What I'm really impressed with is the number of people that are watching right now is actually going up and it's super boring. Oh, seven minute abs. See, I didn't read that. I get it. Right over my head. The seven minute abs. Obviously, I'm not privy to workout stuff. Tony, that's a good question. I'm going to get to that right when I get done with this stuff. One thing I'm going to do tonight too, guys, is I'm going to change up the way we do the questions. We've been in a routine where we do some drills, we do some stuff, we do our little work with our dogs. Ellie, get up. And then we go to questions. And it gets pretty long, it gets pretty late. Now this is really not what we're looking for. So buckle up, we might be here a while. About six days ago, it was 26 minutes. I sure hope it's not tonight. Diane's in. Welcome, Diane. Um... But what I'm going to do is, I'm still just waiting for this change. That's Ellie. She's laying right here. It's probably not the best spot for her to be. But this little dog's going to have to start to work through some of this stuff. She lives with other dogs. She's going to have to start working through some of the distraction. What I was saying was what's impressive is and what I'm excited about is people are watching this regardless of how extremely boring it's getting right now because what it tells me is you're interested in truly seeing this change if you can't it, it's one thing to experience it and do it it's one thing to watch it and maybe that's tougher because it's it's 
Probably more bo boring. Hope the heat isn't turned on again. Well played, Chris Kangas. I heard about it this morning. Or I heard about it this evening already. I had the heat down apparently too much tonight. And we've already gone down that road, Chris, but that's an inside joke. 49 of you are on right now. I'd say 29 of you might get that one. Just waiting for a change. When it comes, I'm going to set her down. I'm going to take the next little step in this. You saw us do recall when we first came in, and she did pretty nice. Now I'm going to get her to recall to me, and I just want to get, get a couple little sits out of her. And I might do, tonight I might change it up and not be so wanting to get so much. I might get three or four good sits, and that'll be it. Then I'll go right to steadying up to feed. Stop. Now I've got a little antsy... A antsy little Ellie here. That's not making this any easier. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'm trying to work it one-handed. So that's not helping us. But we're going to work through it. Not boring to watch, says Jeff. Helpful. She just had a nice change here. She squeaked a little bit, but her, her physically, her muscles really relaxed just now. <clears throat> now you'll notice if she wanted to, she could chew on me. The habit that I'm forming with her by not allowing it to happen, now all of a sudden it's there and she doesn't even recognize it. That's why we do it, guys. Because I want this to become a habit of don't look for stuff to chew. If it's not there long enough, all of a sudden it becomes... When it's there, it doesn't become sitting up. I spoke too soon. Look who decides she wants to. Very good change physically. Her heartbeat just slowed down. She's relaxed pretty good. I'm concerned of whether or not it's because she's just dialing in on Ellie here or if she's really settling. It took us 20 minutes to settle down for dinner tonight. Hopefully we're back on track tomorrow. Nicole, I think that's an improvement, isn't it? Nicole and Mike have been going through some struggles with place, some struggles with feeding. Jeff Trudell, who just said he actually kind of thinks it's helpful to watch this, he sent me, he, he, we posted him on our page. His dog had a nice breakthrough the other night on place. I had... Uh, who was it this morning that we were talking with? Let me know if you're watching right now. It was Windsor and Allie were the dogs. Uh, we talked about feeding adult dogs together. Um, it's 26 minute biceps. This is this is the extent of my workouts, as, as is clearly evident. All right, so here now we got to start over again. She didn't quite settle where I needed her to, and now she's get working herself up again. Reset the clock. Not awful right now, but she's a little tense. Chris, that was you with Windsor and Allie? I apologize, I didn't realize that was you. Yeah, so Chris sent me a picture tonight. They're making improvements. He said he's going to try to spread them out a little bit more. He thinks that might help. I think there's a lot of different ways to test it out. and You, you gauge it on whether it wor is working or it isn't working. You either keep going or you take steps back. <sighs> Less than five minutes to settle in. Way to go, Jeff. That's real good. Make sure when that happens, Jeff, you let the dog understand. That's what you're looking for. So mark those changes with praise. You can see she's kind of amping up a little bit. I'd really prefer her not to, especially this late, but... The one thing I can't do is I can't control that. 
what I can do is make sure I don't give in. Because trust me, it'd be a whole lot easier to just set her down right now and feed her and be like, oh, let's move on. Well, won't help. 20 minutes, but just starting. Well done, Robin. Now, Robin had an interesting scenario. Robin sent me an email earlier today, or uh, not an email, a message. Um, she's got a situation where she's only, it's only going to be really doable for her to do the steadiness before she feeds. What is it? Saturdays, Sundays? Uh, she could do it twice a day. Monday through Friday, it's gonna, just because of her work schedule, it's going to be really tough for her to get it in two times a day. But she can get it in one. So her question was, you think it'll work if I do one? And I said, yeah, I think it'll work. It won't be probably as quick because I'd, like I'd like to get as many repetitions in as possible. If I had enough time, I'd do this three times a day. I don't have enough time. So... Because I don't think it's bad to feed a pup three times a day. I physically don't have time. But I prefer that the nice part about three times a day is you get three repetitions. In. You get triple the, 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 the reps. So if you can't get it twice, I told Robin, I said, if you can't get it twice, get it once. That's better than none. But she's going to be able to try to get two on the weekends. And so when you think about it, she's only missing out on five out of... 14 so she's getting two-thirds of them in which that will help it, it will it, ha it will ha still happen Robin but then the other thing I think you can do is you there's other times throughout the day that you can kind of exercise this that's what we're going to hopefully do um, I'm going to start as soon as this dog starts to learn sit and especially sit and then a little bit of a extended um, extended sit where I can move around as soon as we get that I'll practice that all the time uh, it won't have to be a separate five minute drill it could be sporadically throughout the day we'll work on it so the more that these dogs get to comprehend stuff and learning stuff the more stop that's enough what really drives me nuts right there is and you heard me react this little dog is settling in and then all of a sudden Ellie whines which triggers this one so, set myself up for success. Best thing I probably could have done is have Ellie in the other room. But we're going to try to work through it. Um, but I think once you get her to understand sit and stay, that makes it easy to start practicing it throughout the day. So, I, I like talking about training dogs for windows of time for focus reasons and attention span and all that stuff. But then I like saying, don't just do it during those short attention spans. Instead... Practice what you work in those attention in those short, compressed um, training <laughs> drills or segments. Practice that in between all day long. Don't train dogs for ten minutes a day, and the rest of the time in between they do whatever they want. Because the reality is, is they're always learning. I have to always be training, so we can get stuff done in between lessons. We can reaffirm what we did in those lessons in between. That's where I think more learning takes place. Do your dogs get jealous of one another? Do you spend one-on-one -on -one time with them? Uh, I don't know if they get jealous, Stephanie. I think that question makes sense. When I'm working with my dog, they tend to get jealous. I think they want attention. I think they all want attention. They're all lobbying for it. I think what I need to do is, that's where group work comes in. And I can't do group work until they're all very, very good on their own. Now, she just settled pretty good here. And now Ellie got back up, so that might trigger this. You can hear her moaning. She's adjusting on her bed. But one thing I think group work is very important. Stephanie, for a lot of reasons, that's one of them. <laughs> For them to get to understand, to work, that it's not always them, it's not always about them. But you can't do group work until they have it excellent by themselves. So that was a, that came up, um, you know, that that came up with uh, Allie in, in Windsor today. Um, I said, you know, if you, I said, you potentially may have an issue if you can't get them to sit real, real still by himself at 10 yards. You might have to fix that before you can do this with the two dogs. 
and we were talking about feeding two dogs together at the same time. Kelly Primack joined in. Welcome, Kelly. Rachel's in. Welcome, Rachel. Kelly found a shed today, it looked like. I thought that dog was hurt when we talked last. This change right now is good. And it, I don't know that it's a coincidence that it syncs with my little dog to the left here just finally curled up and laid down. And this dog seems to be settling. I'm looking at her in the camera and her eyes are almost looking like they might be closing. She's still twitching a little bit. But if I can get another 30 seconds out of this, I'm going to call it good, set her down, and we're going to start working on a little recall and some sit work. Really nice change. And it's not coincidence that it's tied in with Antsy over here. Antsy settled in and this dog settled in. So I, I do think, ah, uh, waited too long, waited too long. But I think this settling down will happen quicker. So let's reset it. I do think that they feed off of us. So, um, I think my energy is high, their energy is high. If I'm pretty cool and calm, I think they're so much quicker to settle down. So I think they feed off of us. I think she's feeding off of the dog next to her. That has to do with these, I talk, broken record, but cultural impacts. How these dogs are raised impacts their personalities greatly. Genetics are part of it, but I can change a lot with the environment that we're putting them in. A broken house, a broken life, a broken schedule, you'll have a broken dog. What's your routine for feeding your older dogs? Uh, Emily, I feed, them twi I feed them twice a day. Uh, I feed them in the morning, I feed them in the evening. Today, if you look back at the one we did this morning, I actually did the steadiness drill, not like this, but um, lined them out for food and I worked two of them together, which showed a little bit of honoring. And it showed that they had to... Um, wait their turn and it also showed the value of sending dogs on their name so that was the reason I wanted to kind of talk about that but I feed them twice I feel the twi same thing twice a day once in the morning once in the evening I really thought we were there it's a pup Thought we were there. There, did you see that sigh? She just gave me a big sigh. Usually the big sigh means something. And with the big sigh, her head went down like she was almost falling asleep. I got a feeling we're there. I'm going to make her prove it. Huge change right now. Her whole body is just limp like a wet noodle. And what what really was clear was that deep sigh. And I don't know if you guys saw it or not. Let me know if you saw it. But it was a... Just pissed. Jinxed it. Need another one. Probably should have rewarded that one. Didn't expect her to kick back in that quickly. Shaldig, she is giving me a test. This is a test on me more than anything, and it'll be a test on you. So my challenge to you guys would be, if you're in this situation, who gives in first? If you give in first and you go, enough's enough, let's just get this on the road, show on the road here. I expect this to happen more often for you than it is for me even. And you know, hey, I moved I moved locations. So what it's telling me is the location that we were doing this in for five, six, seven days in a row perfectly meant something to her. She was pretty comfortable with it. Now I've changed that around. I've added some different things to this. And now she has to figure out that she has to do the same thing regardless of where she is. It's part of it. So by the time she gets settled in and doing this, you got to remember this is only second day here in the hallway. 
And I do, I'm not kidding, I think it is important where you are. So if she figures it out in the next two, three days, where she, there's, a, there's a physical change. If she figures it out in the next two or three days that this hallway is the same thing that the kitchen was before, she settles in really quick and really easy, guess what I'm gonna do? Celebrate and go, oh, she's got it? No, I'm gonna move to another spot, probably deal with this. But as soon as we get good at it there, I'm gonna go to another spot. And I'm gonna keep doing that until every spot we go to, I get the exact same behavior. Because then it tells me the behavior is what's stronger than the location. She's changed now, she's real nice. I'm going to count to about 10, and then we're going to move. It's time. She did it. Good girl. Now, I'm going to set her down. I'm going to recall her back and forth along this hallway a little bit. I'm going to reach in my pocket, grab a couple pieces of kibble, we're gonna get her to do some sitting. I'm only gonna get a couple out of her. I'm gonna, I gotta tip this down. Let's, let's do this so you guys can see. Hang in there with me. Hang in there with me. Let's do this. Everybody thumb the hell out of that one because we're out, we're moving now. Okay, little girl, come to me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sit. Good. And a real nice sit to start out with, right? So, probably going to avoid the food. Probably not going to do as much food. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sit. No, I don't like that when she goes to the side like that. Come on. Come on. Okay, good girl. Come on. 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 Sit. See how she wants to cut in there? Sit. Good girl. Very good. Come on. So, I'm going to cut her off at the pass here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise two in a row. Food on the first. Come on. Sit. Get the good girl. You guys can't see that maybe, but I don't want it to always be sitting on this end. I want to mix it up, have her sit on this end too. Come here. Come on. 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 Sit. Very good. That's a good one. Come on. Come on. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. So we went four in a row without food. Come on. This one should get some food. Good girl. One more. Probably pushing it. Probably shouldn't, but you guys know me by now. Sit. Good girl. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sit. Very good. Done. End it. That quick. So that one. Boy, that one's got me all sorts of happy. So that one was beautiful. Blow it up with hearts and thumbs because she worked hard for that one. Now, uh, I'm going to keep the camera in the same spot. Let me tip this down and grab her food. Now, you guys know this routine. Just building off of it, right? So, oh, all the thumbs, I love it. I'm going to set, I'm going to hold her. You can see her feet barely. She's steady. I'm going to set her down. I'm going to time it with the word sit. Sit. No, no, no. Sit. Sprite. Good girl. What do I like the most about that? Boy, there's a, where do I start? A couple things. If you notice, I set her down and she sat really well. That was beautiful. What happened was that she's very excited right now. Her tail was going really good. I don't have a problem with that. We just went through some real high energy stuff. But then she looked at me, she flinched. I said, ah, 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 and she went, and she sat right back down and she corrected it that quickly. What it tells me is she understands, she does understand a little bit about what her job is during this. Her job is to sit her butt down and wait till I send her. And she, she got it, she knew it. So she broke and I didn't have to pick her up. I just verbally got on her with a little, ah, ah, ah. And she corrected and sat. So now I'm going to build on that. I'm going to go a little bit longer time. 
I'm going to maybe ask her to be a little steadier. Sit. Nice eyes, right? Eyes to me, looking for a direction. What do you want me to do, Dad? I don't like her little bit of a scoot back on me. She's scooting back too much. But she really didn't move. Too awful. And I've been talking, and this is hard on her. Sprite, good girl, very good. That's hard on her right there. Because I'm talking, and she's, I think she's anticipating that name. Because if I, if I start talking and she breaks, which she did this morning, I had to start just adding a word or two in. Make it not sound like spry. And do not try, I wasn't trying to fool her into going, but I was trying to let her understand that just because she hears me talk doesn't mean she goes. She's got to go on her name. And I'm tying that to that physical line too, where I lean out over and I snap it. You'll... When you watch me work with the big dogs outside, it's eerily similar to what we do when we send them on a retrieve, because it's the same thing. So the one thing that I didn't like about the last one was she got this little butt scoot and she backed up. And I don't really want that, so I'm not going to let it happen this time. I didn't want to be too hard on her because we've struggled enough tonight, but I'm not going to let that happen this time. Sit. I, I didn't wait that long on that one. And the reason I didn't, because her whole body froze. And she was really just totally focused on me. And when I get that, I'm going to give it to her. I'm going to let, I don't want to even risk it fading a little bit. So I probably didn't wait as long. But what I did was I really waited to catch her telling me she was totally in. She was totally focused. She was totally understanding what this little drill is about. So that was it. And I sent her. Um, I'm gonna, that's going to be it. I'm going to be done with her for tonight on feeding. Um, I'm going to let her eat. I'm going to tip this back up. I'm going to walk over the great wall here. So again, guys, here's my setup. Relatively simple. Did you guys see the post I did um, showing Chris Smith's... Um, I showed Chris Smith what he did. I talked about it for a couple days and never... Um, so I'm just going to let her eat, but I talked about it for a couple days and I finally got around to posting it. It was a picture of Chris. What, what he was having issues with was he was having some struggles with his dog, um, recalling and when he took it on a walk, it was getting to the point where, um, the dog would run off and wouldn't come back. And he said, now the dog's getting too quick to get a little faster for me. So I got to can't talk that long so the dog was getting a little fast for him a little quick for him runs off on him how do I get him back well the environment or where he was I think created way too many distractions so we talked about well how do you fix that how did I fix it I fixed it by going from that little pen to changing it to just closing off the laundry room so I just made her area a little bit bigger with a little more distraction Welcome, Derek. Welcome, Naomi. A couple new people in tonight. So, um, Derek Much joined. Big buck killer. Wyatt Anderson's in. Good job, guys. A lot of new people. That's awesome. Um, so, the, uh, and the pup's finished up here. So, as soon as she's finished up, which it looks like she is. Now, one thing tonight I did was I gave her a little bit extra. I gave her a little extra food. Because if you notice the last couple days, she cleaned it up super quick. Um, that wasn't a Pepsi mat. So um, she cleaned it up extra quick. So I put a little extra in there tonight, and she ate that. So that goes back to, I've had a lot of people ask me, how much do you feed? And I, someone asked today, do you go by what the bag says? And I said, the bag doesn't know your dog. So I don't know how much to feed him either. So we're going to flip this around. I'm just going to grab her bowl. So no, I don't go by what the bag says. I let the dog tell me how much is enough or how much, um, if it's too much or too little. But let me flip this around. Now you can see the step of tonight's process, which is very, very, yeah, did you, she did burp. 
Uh, so then now we go right back and we end it with this with this control and place training. Um, so she is settling. I imagine she'll settle down pretty quickly because she's probably exhausted after that last lesson. Not physically, but probably more mentally than anything. So um, what, where was I? I was talking about Chris's, Chris Smith's little enclosure. So Chris called me because his pup was getting bold. And remember, his pup is a twin sister to Fee here. So or his dog's name is Fee, twin sister to Spry. And Spry gets a little bold too lately. <clears throat> but the... He, he, he was having a hard time getting the dog to recall. The pup, was, the pup was running off and going, this is way more interesting than walking around with dad. Here's a change. Now watch how quickly this change comes. I, I can just sense it from her. She's exhausted. I'm exhausted as well. I'm just waiting for the change. She knows I'm waiting for it too. And when it happens, I'm going to make sure I let her know. I think she sees you guys doing those little thumbs the way she's flipping her head up. So let's see. I'm just gonna keep talking and when the change comes I'm gonna I'm gonna mark it for her. But so Chris had the issue, pup was running off. <clears throat> he said, What do I do? I said, I think you gotta set yourself up for success. You gotta figure out a way to expand the enclosure and eliminate the distractions and make sure and ensure that you have full attention of that pup when she's outside. So he, so I said, you know what I would do? He's got 40 acres. He's got all sorts of area to train. You know how much he needs? About a 20 by 10 space. And that's it with nothing in it. Because that's about all the space his pup can focus through right now and actually pay attention to him. So he's going to have to work on recall and all the stuff that we just did in the hallway in that big space. I'll probably have to do that at some point too. What I like to do is go from my hallway with all the doors closed, which is really easy to take away the distractions. Then I like to go out to my front porch. And my front porch is just a big hallway. I got a railing on one side, a house on the other. I can physically block off one end of it. And the thing about it is, is it's much bigger and it's a little bit more distracting, but it's incremental training and I can get the dog to replicate the behavior out there. Then by the time we're getting off that porch, the habit is getting pretty strong. When I call her back and she's gonna come, we're gonna have a little recall going. And by the time I do that, then we're to the point where we can start going outside and, and possibly doing things in the yard or wherever. But don't go from A to Z or you will fail with a dog. They just, don't, they just don't transfer that way. So we just have to change the environments a little bit. Um, so I'm going to start quick here. Um, I'm going to try. So this is one thing we're going to try to do. Um, because I think it gets really late and I think it gets really long. And I've, I've noticed that. You know, it's hard to ask someone, ask you guys to watch this this long. So we're going to, I'm not going to change, the, I'm not going to cut out the training. I'm not going to cut that part out, but I might have to um, do a set amount of answering of questions. And if we don't get to them, it's not that I don't want to answer them. It's that we're just going to have to push into the next uh, sequence. Um, so I'm going to go through and scroll through some of these quick because otherwise we get pretty late. Um, let's see when training service dogs which is what I've done for the last 11 years our main motto is slow is fast yes I, I think there's I go back to no speed training with dogs um, patience repetition consistency form habits that's it well taking a dog out too early for sheds mess with their training um, this is the one thing shed training I think is the one thing you can get away with by taking dogs relatively early and not without screwing them up. Can't do it with a bird dog, can't do it with a gun dog. You can do it, I think, with a shed dog, but here's my warning. I don't think you run a lot of risk in screwing the dog up as long as you have realistic expectations. So what I mean by that, there's a change and I missed it. So do you see the change in her? I missed it. Good girl. Very good. Yeah, you. Very good. That's all she needs. But and I was late on it. So um, the going out too early with a shed dog, here's my concern is you go out and you're excited and you start finding a few sheds and you're not going to have success. So the dog doesn't do well. Okay. Maybe it does, but more often than not, it's not going to. 
very rarely do dogs just inherently perform well without it's it's like that one in a million kid that just really can play basketball well there's a lot of kids that can play basketball but a lot of them train work at it they, they practice a lot right so every once in a while you have that one well very rarely so if you've got a dog that you're not to that point with because of time or just development and it's just not just not to that point where I would say it's ready to be going out and being an effective shed hunter and you go you're not necessarily going to screw it up you're just kind of going for a walk if you find one great make sure you end up with success um, the, the thing with shed dogs is you don't have that many opportunities to find them it's not like pheasant hunting in, in South Dakota I can flush a thousand roosters by noon that's a lot of repetition a lot of experience quick fast readily available good very good yeah you very good that's a lot of repetition and experience for dogs quickly you, you can go to game farms and train dogs and put put them on birds and those are all you there's no such thing for shed hunting so every shed is an opportunity to train and it, it might be painstaking and it might take a long time and it might look really awful and it might be embarrassing if you got friends with and you go you got a shed dog but the dog runs over it 10 times it might trip on it not pick it up but eventually if you're persistent and positive about it your dog will likely gain something from that experience if you go out and you're shed hunting and you're with buddies or yourself and you come across a shed and the dog doesn't might walk up to it sniff it and walk away from it might trip on it might not pay any attention to it and you start getting down on the dog frustrated no 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 get back here find it come on come on find it this snowballs in the wrong direction and your dog goes what the hell am I doing uh, why is why is this guy so mad at me why is he so frustrated and when dogs are in that state of mind they certainly don't learn they're not capable of learning they won't process information positively so you have to be conscious of that so when I say yes you can go early with realistic expectations that's what I mean by it um, but otherwise no I don't think you screw them up I think you take them for a walk uh, a good walk that you hopefully can gain something from Hope the heat isn't up. We went through that. That was inside. Uh, went through this. Took 20 minutes. Megan's email without staff. Windsor and Alley. Tonight's training place. Five minutes. So Jeff made improvements tonight. Do your dogs get jealous? We talked about that one. Um, What's your routine for feeding your older dogs? I think we talked about that one. So that this one kind of helped too. I answered some of these during it. Um, my, pup, my pup River is doing great at sit and extended sit, as well as recall. She's even sitting and recalling on the whistle. 11 weeks tomorrow. Great work. Great work. This part, the food excitement is still the most frustrating drill for me. So Jay, it sounds like you've got a lot of good things going. A lot of positives. So what I'm going to say to you is ride the energy but be ready for the wind to come out of the sails because you're going to hit bumps. And, and the thing is, is you're going to have to work through those. So I also think you focus on where your weaknesses are and strengthen those up, shore those up. I always call it filling in holes in the training. So, um, you know, this food part is the most frustrating drill for you. The less you can show the frustration, the quicker you'll get through it. So I'm just telling you right now, it's the universal answer. Just be patient. You'll get there. I promise you, you'll get there. Be patient um, and celebrate the victories. When you when your dog does well, make sure the dog knows it. Um, that's why I always tell people, don't overpraise. Don't praise the hell out of them for doing something that they should do. Because when they really need to understand they did something good, you don't have any left in the tank. So same with correction. Correct and praise as light as possible to get them to understand the, the, the return on it. And because you're always going to need a little more. So light pressure, light praise, just enough to get what you need. And then go lighter. Um, let's see. Chris Kang is catch this tomorrow. Ordering the DVD this weekend. Looking forward to it. Excellent. Welcome. Well, thanks for hanging in with us as long as you could. Boy, she's giving a test. She did. Mega patience. Well, I wish I had more. What pup does that? I always get relieved when I hear it because... It usually means she's giving in. He's giving in. Absolutely. Your pup does that. Totally. It's a it's a body language thing. It's a mannerism. Um, way to go spry. She did it. We got lots of love going there. Way to, 
Way to stop while you're ahead. Jay, Jay recognizes that Jeremy may be caught on once in a while. I make more mistakes than anybody. So, and I'm aggressive and I like to get a little bit more out of everything I do. So sometimes I have to be conscious of that. One more probably shouldn't story of my life. Yeah, I'm with you, Kelly. Uh, Wyatt and Derek got in. Is she backing up for better eye contact? I don't think so. I think what she's doing is she's just fidgety. Um, and what she, what I, what I see is it happens a lot on the on these uh, hard floors. So I think one thing is she's, I think she's very ready to go, and she's putting pressure down. And she's really pushing on the front on the floor, and she's pushing so hard with these front paws, thinking I just really I'm digging in physically. I'm digging in to resist going. It pushes her ass back. So I think that's part of it. I don't see it as much when they don't uh, when I'm not on hard floors. So I don't ever see it because it's, it's, it's not like they're adjusting their hindquarters. They're just scooting and it's sliding. It's not like they're scooting, they're sliding. So they're really just kind of pushing hard on the fronts. That's my problem. He will set and stay, but scoots his butt. There you go. So scooting is different than sliding. Scooting would be readjusting. I don't want that corrected. You know, I, if, if that were the case, I'd have given some correction tonight. I kind of let it slide because I, I felt like we were, I, I couldn't be so nitpicky on her. Um, it wasn't a Pepsi, indeed it was not. I didn't. I did. I do feel like I earned that beer tonight, and I might have another one. I sent you a text tonight. I don't know if you got it. If you want, you can talk about it here. Um, see if I was still on, guys. I might have kicked off. Do me a favor, Cody. Message it to me really. Send it. To, type it out right here. Um, Nicole got in. Welcome, Nicole. Jumped on late, but caught your answer to taking dogs out chatting around a little too early makes me feel better. We went out to the guys to a guy's farm and she stuck around then and took off for a bit on a run. I realized the guy was I was with didn't know much about dogs, so BS the to save face and told him she was wide ranging shed dog. You and Wyatt would get along together well. Uh Hutch is wide ranging shed dog at times too, right, Wyatt? Uh, but glad to hear she did, I didn't screw her up. No, you're not going to screw her up. These guys, these guys, the, the thing with the dogs are um, inadvertently, we're going to expose them to things that we look back, hindsight, and go, probably shouldn't have done that. We're not going to ruin it. They're not super fragile. What we want to do is learn from that and try to minimize it is all. Um, so don't think that these, guys, these are little China dolls that get broken if you make one mistake. They're not. Um, it's just a big picture thing. We just got to look for the big picture. Cody, send me your question quick and I'll answer it. Otherwise, we're going to shut her down for the night. Um, good night tonight, guys. You guys, great, great steady presence. It's probably the same people that are on right now, I'm guessing. Um, okay, haven't retrieved in a while since we talked last. I did, did tonight to burn some energy tonight. Well did, very good. What, well did, very good with the dummy. Tried with the hard horn, still shy from it since she got poked. So Cody had a dog that was poked a while back and turned off by a hard horn. Where have I heard that before? Guys, I can't tell you how often I've heard it, okay? Cody is not the first person to have this story. In fact, I'm not the first person to have this story, but I certainly am a person that has had this story, which is the whole reason why we have a training dummy. So Cody is Cody's a really good... Um, story. He had his dog poked by it. How do we get the? How do we build this back up? How do we get the dog? So what I'm what I'm looking at is haven't retrieved in a while since we talked. I did tonight to burn some energy. He did very well with the dummy. That's good. He's got. He looks sounds like he's got some confidence. There's very little issue with poking when it comes to a training dummy. He's not going to get hurt even if he does poke himself. He's not going to get hurt. So we're conditioning that this thing isn't so bad. This shape isn't so bad. The smell, you can make it so that it doesn't, that that smell is not so bad. In fact, it's good. It gets me a retrieve. It gets me what I want. The, tried with the hard horn, still shy. Now, I don't, it wasn't that long ago, Cody, uh, that we talked about this when that when it happened. So my, I think the easy answer to this is obvious. You have not built up in that dog's mind the confidence enough with the shape. So um, what do we do? We don't, when, when we run into problems in training, I call, maybe it's a brick wall, like there's a brick wall across the road, okay? 
So well, there's a couple ways of fixing that. There's a couple ways of trying to get around, get through that brick wall. You can lower your head and you can just ram into it and continue to ram until maybe the bricks give and you get through. Or you take a step back and you take a look at the wall and you realize if you take a few steps to the right or to the left, there's a doorway there. And all I gotta do is open that door and go through. So dog training is like that. So we can get in a, a groove where we go, I just wanna get through this, get through this, get through this, and it just spirals downhill and isn't going well. Or we take steps back and we, maybe we have to build a ladder and then climb over the wall. We gotta do something. I don't know why we're always talking about the wall these days, this is not political. But what, we have to take steps back. So what it tells me is, not enough time, not enough repetition has happened, Cody, where you built the confidence. So guess what? Just take a few steps back. Don't be in a rush. There's no rush in this. I don't know. I'm not sure how old your dog is, Cody, but I would be willing to bet that if it's, in, if it's anywhere in the three years old and younger, to have a good shed, se to try to rush through and get a good shed season out of it right now and, and maybe have sub subpar results, let's say not, not so good results, will likely be 10 to 12 more years of subpar results. Whereas if you take a step back right now and you fix this problem, you get this problem fixed, you may give up this year of shed hunting. And I'm not going to say you may give it up, but you may not have quite the shed season that you're hoping for. But then you'll have 10 to 12 years of good shed, shed hunting with that dog. So to me, the sacrifice of a year is worth 10 good years versus getting that and I use that same I use that same thought process when it comes to bird dogs. I don't hunt gun I don't I don't take a dog to a blind until they're over a year old. Uh, in the first year or two of hunting, I may not even bring a gun. I usually bring a gun, but I, I'm not worried about hunting. It's transitional training. So get two or three good seasons under your dog and then enjoy them for twelve to 15, thirteen years of great hunting as opposed to hunting them the first year and having fifteen years of Mediocre at best, because that's what happens, I think. How do you feel about check cords? I don't use them. I don't think you need them if you do your, if you do your foundation work. I don't think you need them. I definitely, you know, that's a, uh, a good question. Check cords, shock collars, all that stuff. If you build a good foundation early, you shouldn't need that stuff. And maybe it's not even early from a sense of time, but early in training of dog might be three years old, but you're just really getting into the training part with them. If you build a good foundation, that's why you don't need those things. Those are crutches. Those are, those are things that uh, are band-aids. They, they cover up blemishes. And what I'd rather do is let it, it, it it's build the foundation so strong that I don't need that stuff. Um, take steps. He's unfortunately, he'd hunt all day though. He uh, hunches a great dog. Don't say that. Uh, my dog stays in 30 yards of me. I like it that way. No doubt about it. Kelly, where were you yesterday? We had a couple that we talked about with that. Um, how far out do you have your dogs work? I like 25 to 35 yard max um, for multiple reasons. One of them is I bird hunt with these dogs as well. I don't want dogs working out of gun range. The other thing is 99% of the time in the woods, I can't see 30 yards. If a shed were laying between me and 30 yards away, I wouldn't see it anyway. So these 100 yard rangers... These dogs that want to, that guys that want dogs working way out, I'll follow you um, because I probably will pick up the sheds that you're missing. Um, no dog's nose is good enough to cover hundreds of yards at a time. So, and visually, they're not seeing them. So, I think 25 to 35 yards is my preference. I'm going to wrap this up here pretty quick, guys. Um, thanks for your time. Thank you. How do I get back to wanting a hard horn? You better build the confidence in the shape before you even think about a hard horn. I don't think you've gotten that, Cody. Um, almost eight months. Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, young, man. Super young. Eight months? My dogs don't pick up hard horns until like 10 months at the earliest. So you got to go way, way back and really pump the brakes and, and, and slow down and reset up with this. Um, here's the nice part, Cody. You've got a lot of time ahead of you, so build the foundation solid. Don't don't get excited about what the dog looks like on the surface as far as a building because it'll tip over if it doesn't have a foundation. I don't care how pretty the siding is. 
um, we need to make sure we got a good solid foundation. Slow down. Um, don't plan on finding Casey Morgan joined in. Welcome, Casey. I don't plan on finding any this year, but I am taking her to the ground to walk. Definitely. And when you do find them, let her find them. Take as long as it takes. And if she doesn't pick them up, that's okay. Praise the hell out of her for smelling them next to you. Because all those little impressions are going to take steps closer to her picking them for you. So that's it, guys. We're going to wrap it up for tonight. Thank you. Great group. Great following tonight. Um, please continue to do me a favor and share these things. Um, and uh, we'll be back. We're not done yet. So uh, we're going to constantly try to tweak these things. Um, get them to be... Uh, the best we can get them. So that, that's the point. So you guys take care. We'll talk with you tomorrow.